Hello! In this video, we're going to talk about Chromebook Care 101. And in this presentation, we're going to talk about how to increase student ownership of devices and keep breakage rates to a low so that we can maximize our learning. Before we begin, why do you think that it's important to have a Chromebook in school? And why do you think that it's important for you to have a Chromebook at home? It's important to remember that your device is your responsibility. Chromebooks are important but expensive devices that maximize your learning both inside and outside of the classroom. It's important to build habits to not only take care of your device physically, but also build habits to manage distractions and protect your digital information. Over the next few slides, we're gonna talk about different supports that are in place to help you build these habits for your time in school and beyond. Before we get to that though, why do you think it's important to take good care of your Chromebook? Let's talk about losing or major damage to your device. The first time you lose or have major damage to your device, a fee will be issued by your building admin team. This would be the principal, the assistant principal, or a dean. Your name will be documented in DPS's SNIPE system as a first incident and a new device will be checked out to you. If you damage your device a second time, you'll get another fee issued by your building admin. You'll lose device privileges for the remainder of the semester, and you'll have to have a family meeting with admin and sign a device agreement. Once the semester ends, you'll be issued a new device at the beginning of the next semester. If you have major damage or lose your device a third time, Another fee will be issued to you by your building admin, and you'll lose device privileges for the rest of the year. You'll also need to have a family meeting with the admin team. Where do you think that most damage on Chromebooks come from? And how do you think that you can avoid that damage? Now we'll talk about device use. If you use your device inappropriately, the first time, it'll be a parent contact. You'll also probably have to have a restorative conversation with your teacher. The second time, or if you fall into a second tier of using your device inappropriately, you'll have to have a family meeting with the teacher and the restorative team to discuss behavior, and you'll also need to review and sign an acceptable use agreement. If you use your device inappropriately for a third time or fall into a third tier category, you'll need another family meeting with admin to discuss the behavior, and we'll give you a reminder of the acceptable use agreement that you signed. Depending on the offense, there may be a possible confiscation or whitelisting of your device. If you're caught on inappropriate sites or using inappropriate or threatening language, your device will be immediately confiscated and reporting to building admin. So now think about it. What are good ways that you can maintain good digital citizenship and stay focused in class? When your Chromebook is first checked out to you, there is no initial fee. You won't need to pay anything to get your first Chromebook. However, if there's damage or loss to your device, the fees are as follows. For any accidental damage to your Chromebook, there's a $25 fee that's associated with it. Intentional damage of your Chromebook could cost anywhere from $25 to $280. The final damage fee would be determined by repair tech based on the required replacement parts or device replacement. If you lose your Chromebook or other accessories like a charger, case, or hotspot, there will also be fees associated with that. If you lose your Chromebook, it is $280 to replace. If you lose your charger, case, or hotspot, it's $20 to replace any of those items. Now, when talking about fees, there are definitely different alternative payment plans and situations in which fees are waived based off of need at the school leader's discretion. That's something that you would talk to your principal about. So let's go into it. What do you think are some examples of accidental damage? What do you think are some examples of intentional damage? What's the difference between accidental and intentional damage? You won't just be using your Chromebook at school, but you'll also be taking your Chromebook home. It's important for you to have a safe place in your home to charge your device at night on a flat surface, like a table or a desk. It's not a good idea to leave it on the floor because somebody could step on it or trip on the charger. Having a station where you charge your device every night 
helps with a routine to make sure that your Chromebook is charged and ready to go for each school day. Where will you charge your device? It's also important to be careful when you are moving around with your device. If you bring a backpack to and from school, it's important for you to safely secure your device in the backpack. Avoid scratching your Chromebook by checking your bag for sharp items like pens, pencils, keys, etc. Using a case is up to you. It's also important for you to keep your bag clean and be careful to keep dust, food, slime, or other substances from getting into the USB port, headphone jacks, and power ports on the sides of your devices. It's a good idea to clear out your backpack at the end of every week just to make sure that nothing accumulates that could damage your device while you're carrying it to and from classes and school. When walking from class to class or even across the classroom, make sure your Chromebook is closed and always use two hands. At all costs, avoid carrying the, your device by the screen. A lot goes on in the hallways. It's important to have an organized stack of items with your Chromebook securely on top. Dropping your Chromebook can cause accidental damage to the screen or other parts of the device. Make sure that while using your device, you keep all food and drinks away from your Chromebook. Spilling liquid will damage the hardware and food can make your keys stick or sticky. It's also important to keep items like pencils, notebooks, cell phones off of your keyboard. That's the most common way to shatter a screen. When these items are accidentally left on your keyboard and then you shut your device, that's the most common way that a screen is shattered. It's also important to not pile things on top of your Chromebook because putting heavy objects on top of your device can damage the screen. And just for good measure, here's another reminder to keep items off of your keyboard to avoid shattering the screen. Shattering the screen is the most common accidental damage that we see with Chromebooks. Your Chromebook is a touchscreen Chromebook. It's important for you to not touch the screen with a pen, pencil, or any other item. The screen is really sensitive and responds when you lightly touch it with your finger. Do not use excessive pressure on the screen, especially if you're frustrated that it's not working properly. If you're having issues with your touchscreen capability, you might want to try cleaning your screen or using a stylus. Never move a Chromebook by lifting from the screen. Always support a Chromebook from its bottom with the lid closed. You also should refrain from exposing your Chromebook to extreme temperatures. For example, don't leave your Chromebook in the car. Temperatures can get really hot or really cold, and this can make it so that your Chromebook doesn't work as well. One really important thing in maintaining your device is to turn your Chromebook off at night. Just like you, your Chromebook works hard all day and it needs time to rest. Turn off your Chromebook at night, whether you leave it in the classroom or at home. To turn off your Chromebook, press the power button. Alternatively, you can hold down the power button for three seconds to turn your Chromebook off. You can also hold down the refresh button and tap the power button to restart your Chromebook. Anytime you're taking a break during the day, make sure to close your Chromebook, which puts it in sleep mode and saves energy. The best thing you can do if your computer is not working correctly is to just reboot it. Turning off your device at night will also make sure that your Chromebook goes through the updates it needs to make sure that it works properly. Accidents are inevitable. If you, or someone else, spill something on your Chromebook, wipe it off with a dry cloth. If the spill seeped under your keyboard or around the touchpad, turn the power off immediately. Once you turn the power off, you may want to rotate your Chromebook so that the keys are facing downwards and the liquid that was spilled on the keys can drain out. To clean your screen or keyboard, use a microfiber cloth with a little bit of water sprayed onto the cloth. Do not spray water directly onto your Chromebook. You also should not use household cleaners like Windex or Clorox wipes because they'll remove the protective film on your screen. It's also important to remember that anytime you leave your Chromebook on your desk to close the lid so that no one can access your documents or damage your device. It's important to not share your Chromebook with anyone unless your teacher asks you to do so. In that case, make sure that you sign out of your Chrome profile. Lastly, it's really important to not share your password with any other students. Now let's talk a little bit about protecting your digital footprint. A digital footprint is the collection of personal data you leave behind while using the internet, like where you live, what products you buy, your email addresses, and more. 
It includes information you actively share through social media, as well as data companies that collect on you through cookies and tracking scripts. It's important that you not go to inappropriate websites on your Chromebook. Everything you do or open on the Chromebook is saved and your history can't be deleted. It's also important to not use the webcam to take inappropriate pictures or pictures without someone's consent. These also can't be permanently deleted. Remember, anything that happens under your account or on your device is your responsibility, which is why it's so important to maintain device privacy and make sure that you know where your device is at at all times. Now let's think about it. Which aspects of Chromebook care do you feel really confident in? And which of those aspects of Chromebook care do you feel like you might need a little bit more support with? If you need additional support with your Chromebook, you can go to a lot of different people. If you have a lost or broken or uncharged device, the first person you should go to is probably your homeroom teacher. If you have any issues with your account, getting signed in, or applications on your computer, your homeroom teacher might send you to the building STR or STP to help you fix it. Even though the school provides the Chromebook to you, it's important for you to think of it as your device. You're responsible for it and everything on it, and so it's important for you to take good care of it. Think of it like this. If your parent or guardian purchased a cell phone for you and added you to their plan, wouldn't you still think of that cell phone as your phone? It's the same idea with a Chromebook. Just because DPS issued the device to you doesn't mean that you can't make it your own Chromebook. Thinking about that, what do you think you could do to feel more connected to your Chromebook? This can include things like laptop safe stickers for personalization, changing your background, buying a case, or anything else that can really make your device feel more like your own. Thank you for taking the time to listen to this video about Chromebook care and Chromebook ownership. If you have any questions about your device, you can go to your homeroom teacher and they'll point you in the right direction to where you can get additional supports.